I'm going to call the Penfield Community Victory Garden meeting to order for January 21st. Happy New Year. It's the first uh, meeting of 2021. Um, we'll start with the approval of the minutes from December 2020. Thank you, Chris, again, for taking care of that for us. Um, if anyone has any comments about the minutes, Otherwise, we will see if anybody would like to. Are you making a motion to approve the minutes? You can sign it. I motion. <laughs> uh, can I get a second on the motions to approve the minutes? Thank you, Greg. All right. Yeah, we don't we don't have too many um, committee members in attendance tonight. I don't even think we have a quorum. So unless we get some more people, I don't think we can. Um, move forward on much of anything, right? So we're going to put uh, Sam right at the top of the agenda today um, with his scout project that he's working on. I'm going to let um, Sam just give us a few minutes to tell us about the compost sifter idea that he has and uh, what he has started uh, designing for us. So go ahead, Sam. Hi, my name is Sammy Goodwin. Uh, thank you for letting me talk here tonight. Uh, I'm a scout at St. Joseph's uh, Church is where our scout troop is located. And um, I've been talking with Mrs. Marr um, about this eagle project I could do for your garden. Uh, basically, uh, I will be planning, overseeing, and leading in the construction of two different soil sifters. Uh, we will have a metal tripod uh, that'll be collapsible, easily transportable uh, for everyone to use for their own like gardens. We'll have it so it fits in the garden plots uh, to make it a lot easier for that. And then the second one will be a bigger wooden one that a wheelbarrow can fit under uh, for all of the compost beds. Um, that's basically the gist of the project with construction. Um, yeah, we'll have them hang down by chains. We'll have it so just like two of you would be able to hopefully move them. The wooden one might require more than two, but I think we're planning to put wheels on it to make it easier to move but obviously that one will be sturdier and heavier. Um, we have a lot of the construction kind of mapped out. Uh, I have drawings that I've been showing Ms. Marr and I've been getting approval from my scout leaders and from her as the beneficiary. Um, as for, as far as price goes, uh, we, went to Home Depot and we logged how much everything should cost so we would get a rough estimate. Uh, and when we did that, we were sitting at about um, a little over 300 with overestimating some of the stuff, like making sure it's more on the high end so we don't accidentally underestimate because that would be worse. But um, I, I've talked with Ms. Marr and she said, you guys may be able to chip it about like maybe around a hundred, uh, though that's not confirmed yet. And um, uh, I will be doing other fundraising to make up for anything else uh, or donations, of course, uh, especially I'll be reaching out to Home Depot and Lowe's and any lumber yards uh, in the coming weekends to see what materials I can get for free or just discounted. Um, everything is going smoothly so far. We're hoping to get everything kind of all set. Uh, probably during February, we'll try to have everything all wrapped up by the end of February. And for a scout project, you need to meet a hundred hours. And while I'm confident I'll be able to meet a collective 100 hours with this, we may also front load some of those hours by 
uh, trying to help out in other ways around the garden, whether it be yard work or what have you, uh, just to be safe and make sure. Um, so yeah, that's basically the gist of the project. If there's anything you want me to cover in more detail or if you have any questions, uh, can let me know. Mute. Um, no, mute. I guess not. Hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. Wait a second. Hi, oh, hang on. Put your... Hey, Sam, can you hear me? Sorry. We're six feet apart, but we still get back feed. Um, yes, we can so, handle um, donating at least 100 bucks towards your project. Okay. The second thing is, um, obviously, when you build your project, it would be really great if maybe you're... Um, we have tons of compost that will need sifting. Um, so it'd be great if you're, you know, you, as you said, you might want to add some extra time to your working. We can have you demonstrate how it works. So we can, uh, there's quite a few um, areas of the of the compost that need to be sifted down. So we can um, kind of work on that. Um, so it's a great project. I've seen the paperwork. I can have Sam send me some photographs, which I can then email to um, the committee so they get to see what it looks like, but it's a really well, neat project. Closing, um, I think it's going to be a great email, benefit to our garden because um, okay. as we all know, we've been using bed, the bed springs to sift our soil and this will be more of a, a traditional pro professional one. Also though, what might, we might want to do is I will make, um, maybe we can talk a, a list about a lot of the materials that Sam's using because I know a lot of us have things in our garages, extra metal, extra two by fours or stuff that we might want to use. Yep, do that. We can take a peek on seeing what we can uh, scrounge up before you go shopping at Home Depot or Lowe's, so. Yeah, I used yeah. to have all that stuff. We may be able to help with something like that as well. Okay, but it's a great idea. Sam can send me some of the drawings. Um, he's done a lot of work on it. Um, we've, we've met quite a few times. He's put in a lot of effort and um, um, the portable one is really a thrill because as we all know, yes. we clean out our beds and after a while they get filled with junk and it's kind of nice to be able to have the portable one, which I thought would be great just to hang right on the shed. So it's not even put away. It'll be hung right on the shed where people can come and take it down, use it and put it back on. So thank you for doing the work. Um, it looks great so far and I'll send out pictures once Sam and I okay, I'm, I'm uh, up already. communicate that. Thank okay. you. I'll send out an email to you tonight so yeah, you can. That'd be perfect. Send that I still out. owe you an email, so I will send that to you. It's just been getting a, kind of a crazy couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've spent a lot of time at home lately uh, with uh, family issues mm -hmm. um, in New Hampshire, so everything's fine now. So we'll be catching up on stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm gonna... But a good job. So I'm going to mute, and Dot's coming back on. Okay. Okay. Hi, Gordy. Um, thank you very much, Sammy. Um, and I'm, I'm very sorry. I was helping Mr. Barnes get into the meeting while you were speaking. And I know that um, Mrs. Mara already filled me in on a lot of the information about your um, garden. So if you saw me with a phone in my hand, I apologize. I was trying to help some of the committee members get into the meeting. Um, are there any other questions or comments for Sammy from the committee? No? Okay, that's great. Thank you very much, Sam. You don't have, have to stick around. You probably have some work you need to get done anyways, right? Okay, have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. See you. Okay, um, next up on the agenda is um, an additional item that I neglected to put on the agenda, <laughs> which is the election of the officers for 2021. We didn't have any nominations, so Nancy Mara is running uncontested for the chairperson job and myself, um, Dorothy Brennis is running uncontested for the vice chairperson job. So I would assume that uh, if there needs to be a vote, um, yes. since we are uncontested, yep. So can we have um, 
for the position of chairperson, uh, Nancy Marr. All in favor of Nancy's leadership for the next two year term, say aye. 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 All right, great. And for the position of vice chairperson, um, myself, Dorothy Brennis, all in favor of the position of vice chairperson, Dorothy Brennis, say aye. 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 Okay. We have no abstains. So I would say that uh, starting in February, I'll, Nancy and I will um, switch our roles and uh, continue to be the leadership for this garden. And if well, thank anyone has so, Thanks so much for doing that. And maybe in February we can have an inauguration. I would like that. Mm -hmm. I would like that. <laughs> and, and gifts, right? Um, <laughs> seeds, yeah. Okay, so back to scout projects. I met with um, Craig, who is doing our ramp at the community garden, our handicap ramp for accessibility to our pad and shelter. And he showed me the drawings that he has. He's been very diligent about the details for the correct types of hardware and things. And he's gonna be getting back the uh, town inspector uh, to finalize his plans um, for that. He also will be able to do the hardscaping around the parking area where the um, shelter is with those garden blocks that we got. So those are two things that he um, is, is gonna take care of for us and I'll keep you updated on um, any more news for that RAM project, but he has a done date by August for him. So it'll well, be a spring. Gonna, is that gonna be concrete too, just an extension? No, that's not concrete. It's going to be wood with rails and it will have like these things on it so that it's not slippery. Yeah. Um, seems pretty solid what his um, plan was that he showed me. Mm -hmm. um, railings on both sides and the railings will go all the way to um, the shelter pad, you know, continuing on to the concrete rail, uh, concrete uh, ramp part, excuse okay. me. Um, so. He definitely did some homework on that, and it, it looks it looks good, what he showed. Um, so hopefully we'll get him into a meeting, maybe February or March, um, to tell us some more about his project. A nice kid. Yeah, we've been, um, fortunate. We've been fortunate with all our Eagle Scouts. Uh, yeah, the Eagle Scouts that we've had have been fantastic. Um, there is one communication that uh, I did get from Dave about a uh, project with a, a garden peppers um, hot sauce. It's an interesting project that uh, this company, and I wanna, this uh, particular company, they buy their produce from uh, community gardens to create this hot sauce. And then on their website, they highlight all the things the community gardens do. Um, I'll send it out to everyone. I'm not sure how it, it could be done because we cannot sell produce from our garden. That's in our charter, but perhaps it's a way that we can um, donate it. We can donate it. Right. So that, that could be a possibility. So it doesn't have to be a money-making thing, obviously. Um, <laughs> They could donate back some hot sauce. Yeah, <laughs> and we could donate it to the, the uh, food shelf. There we right? go. Yeah, oh. it could be a full circle thing because we give them our peppers anyways, right? All yeah. Right. And I know the food shelf loves our stuff, so I'm going to look more into it, Dave. Thank you for sending me that. Um, I didn't respond on email because I was doing some research about it. So okay. it's a really interesting project, though. Yeah, um, sounds like it. Sounds yeah, like it did. Um. Yeah, so I'll get more about that out to the committee. Um, the town board update for the 2020 season uh, was actually supposed to be this week, but I overextended myself. So um, it would it will be in, on February 3rd, February 3rd now. 
So we can um, discuss a little bit about what needs to go on that town board update um, for February 3rd. And it's always better if people kind of say things, because I forget a lot of things <laughs> about what we've done over the season. So if there's any highlights that you think should be brought up at the town board meeting that we'll be presenting the garden state address, the state of the garden address, as I like to call it. Um, if you can think of anything, you could throw it out there now, or if you think about it later, you can send an email. Well, I think one thing we ought to highlight with them that we've raised the price for rental and that we've uh, limited uh, beds to one so that more people can get involved. Good. Yeah, and your, uh, what, what do you the ever- The food forest. The food forest. Uh-huh. Great. The scout project. Yep. Yep. So okay. And then anything that we've got planned for 2021, we ought to highlight with them. And we were able to make two coats out of moles, out of vole skins. <laughs> um, moving, moving the little garden shed. Yeah, that, that's something that we might. Yeah. Uh, obviously our produce donations and our work with the community. Yeah. Um, and then I guess maybe how the pandemic impacted the garden. And in some ways it was very positive because we had a lot more people, you know, want to come in and we had a waiting list again. So it's generated a lot of interest, the need to grow your own food. So was the uh, shelter featured last year, the new shelter? I don't I'll look back at my notes. I want to say it was. Yeah. Or plans for it. Um, I believe so. The, the hang on. Okay. okay, the shelter was featured, but it wasn't fully finished. We didn't have the yeah. the cement down, so you know we'll we'll talk about that because we now have a flooring. We had it sealed by the rotary. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we had a number of additional things done on yeah. that um, right. shelter because it it was a pretty rooms. significant project. Um, I think we did recognize the fact that it built. Um, we had um, the um, um, picnic benches done, but they weren't really seen. So that's something, uh, you know, so we can re reference that again and how it's been used. So yes, it was covered because it was done, but there's still, we did so much more this, nice. this summer on it. And we've still got a few more little projects associated with it. So I think it's going to be a topic of conversation for a couple more meetings, <laughs> um, a couple more yearly updates. So um, we'll mention that. So yes, thank you. I think another thing to mention, one negative that we're still having problems with uh, people, somebody stealing stuff out of the garden. Uh, yep. Okay. And then they're always in interested in financials. So how much we brought in and how much we spent. In okay. All right. That sounds good. If there's anything else that people think of, just send it to me. Um, well, I guess we put that new uh, water pipe in underneath the sidewalk, too, that they didn't have to do. We did that, didn't we? Put the pipe in, the new pipe in under the sidewalk for the water. Well, we didn't do that, no. Oh, the town did that? Yeah, DPW. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was done a couple of years ago, though. I don't think that was this year. Okay. No. Yeah. We have, to re we have to replace the hose, right? Yes, we have replaced the hose, and now um, we also did some fence replacement. So that is something we – let me write that down, because that was a big – still not done, <laughs> but almost done. Fence yeah, but it's better. I guess that it'll tell this spring when the groundhogs start. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hopefully they won't crawl this year. Yeah. Definitely hoping they won't crawl up this year. Yeah. All right, yeah, we do have another section we have to put. We have, uh, it is not done. There are still some parts that need to be completed. So that is gonna come up on the update, but it, we also have to say that we have the materials that just didn't get completed, so. Um, Maybe we could do that on the first work day in the spring. If we're allowed to have a first work day, yep. Yeah. We will. Um, so public participation, is there any public participation tonight? 
All right. Well, no Sam was kind of public participation. Yeah. Um, action items. Combination changes on the locks. We discussed it last time. I have not changed the combinations on the lock. That action item will probably get done in, as we get closer to the warmer weather and we just discover which locks are the best to use right now. We do have some newer locks because we bought more than we needed last year just so that we would have backups. So. Um, and that will be communicated in this route? It will be, yep. Yep. Okay. Um, the member guidebook was updated. Uh, the information that people sent to me was updated and I sent it to Sabrina for the, for the first week of January because they needed to send it out to people who were getting there. Um, That's something started. I wanted to ask you too. Do you want sure. me to send it um, via email to a lot of people paid over the phone and just mailed me their, um, yeah. their form. Do you want me to put it on, I don't know if you want it on the website or do you want me to email it to them? You or? could put it on the website and email it to them. But also when we have our takeout dinner for our garden members, which is down further on the agenda, um, we can hand them a hard copy. If you can make copies for that okay. particular night, okay. when we do our takeout dinner, once we get approved for that and we work it out, um, then we can hand that out. And if you weren't in the last meeting, that's going to come up later on in the agenda. Um, and we'll say a little bit more about that takeout dinner that we're talking about. Um, so the guidebook was updated. And the, the new rule about people being grandfathered in that have two beds is there. And then any new people that come in can get one bed. If you have two, you can keep them. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Um, all right, we're up to bed registrations and budget. Yeah, so not a lot going on with the, um, the, the budget because we haven't bought anything yet, but currently you have, in bed rental fees, you have $2,690. 80% um, of that, of course. And you have eight new members so far. There are still two beds left. Good. Oh, that's good. Oh. Yeah. So we're almost sold out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again. Yeah. That's great. In January. Yeah. So the eight new members, if I can, if we can get the uh, member list. Yeah. Soon I can start setting up times where I would be individually meeting them at the garden, masked and socially distanced. Okay. The same way we've done the last two or three years. I think that form of orientation is better. And if anybody else wants to do one-on-one -on -one member orientation, let me know. I'll give you all the materials, set you up with a date, and it works really great. I just think it helped people a lot. Yeah, good. You know? Suggestion no. for you, Dot. Yeah. When, when you do that, you might have a bottle of that uh, hand disinfectant. So mm -hmm. people can... We can get some from the town, right? Yep. Okay, thank you. We'll do that. Yeah, that's smart. Okay, yep. All right. Um, and the budget, you already, you already said the budget for now, right? Sabrina, yeah. I'm sorry. I nothing lost track of where I was. Nothing has been spent and um, you have 80% of $2,690 for bed okay. rental fees. And we did spend all of 2020? Yeah. I think you donated about $10. Oh, okay. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> I'll go to Dunkin' Donuts, huh? That's pretty good. Yeah, I guess it is, yeah. Um, all right, critter update. I went out to the garden on Monday and I walked the entire perimeter to check the fence. Um, there is some vole trails and that were in the snow on that Monday when I went in the morning because there was snow on the ground at that point. It was a dusting. Uh, I set one snap trap for critter, voles, mice, and, um, <laughs> 
there wasn't a lot of produce left in the garden. Uh, there was one bed that had some uh, kale in it, and it looks like the critters have been eating that. So um, that's the only place that I saw a high level of action. Everything else looked kind of look. It looked kind of good, and the the fence looked good. Um, and the rest of the property was in good shape in terms of every, you know, we don't go out there that much in the winter. So I like to get out every once in a while and just check on how things are looking. So I walked the trail, everything looked fine out there. Um, so the next agenda item is the spring dinner, which is um, something that we talked about at our last meeting. And we brainstormed the idea of using, we have enough um, pasta and such to have a takeout pasta dinner for our members in place of the spring fling or get together. And when they come in to get their free takeout dinner, we would give them a member manual, maybe some seeds, so that we can kind of start to build a community, especially you know for those newer people and those of us who really didn't have an opportunity to, it's about as close to a social gathering as you're going to get because it's not a gathering, <laughs> but at drive least, by. but it, a drive-by gathering. Come in, pick up a meal, say hello, get your member manual, get some seeds. So are we going to cook it at the rec? As oh. long as we get permission from the rec center, from the town, uh, we will once again ask our food um, certified person to be in the kitchen doing the cooking and and then use what we have, the takeout trays um, and things like that. So, And then they have to sign up ahead of time. Okay. Um, so we know yeah, what we'll do is we'll probably send out um, an RSVP, um, let us know. Um, what I'll do is I'll have my friend um, supervise. Um, we'll do the pre-cooking and then just warm it up as people come, fill the orders. Um, they'll be boxed up. Um, I, I'm assuming the committee will be the ones mass and stuff and we'll just have them run and we'll have some RSVP. So we kind of know how many meals we're preparing for our, our group. But you figure, you know, if two thirds of us come in, it will be a couple couple hundred meals because we'll, we'll make, you know, we invite the family. So we'll make dinner for a whole family. Yeah. Um, so we'll probably need um, some people helping with mass. Um, you know, we'll do the cooking and then, you know, one group, like a, a couple who are used to being with each other can, you know, box it up and another group can bag it up and another couple can deliver it and well, there's plenty of social distancing in the that kitchen because it's beautiful. It's a nice large one. Um, we'll do a lot of the pre-cooking of the pasta first, and all you have to do is dump it in the hot water to warm it, and then add hot sauce, hot tomato sauce, not hot sauce. <laughs> um, so we'll do that. We're gonna probably have to figure out once we know what time, what day, um, and I, I think it's a good use of the stuff we have this year. We don't have a large project, so I, I think. To have a pasta dinner to raise money, just to raise money, is, is we've always had a reason for it. Um, and so I think this year will be kind of just um, no big projects, lots of little projects, and we have enough money with our own budget to do that. And then if, if by chance we are allowed to have a fundraiser a little bit later, I'm hoping that we can convince the town to let us have a very well spaced out uh, plant sale. Um, because obviously they spent the entire summer this last year having all the public market, all the markets were open. So I think if we follow those same public market rules, we may be able to have um, a couple different plant groups like we've done before with our plant sales spread out. I know it was missed this year. I had a lot of gardeners say they really missed, you know, to come and purchase a lot of the veggies and, and plants and stuff to start their gardens. So um, we may do that, but I think generally speaking, the, the pasta dinner is just going to be uh, a way to kind of use up our pasta that we have and our sauce and kind of have a little fun. So what do we have to get donations for bread? Are we going to do bread? Well, or I, don't, or do I think we would buy those items just because we're asking for donations for something that we're just giving away to people who 
you know, have already purchased a garden. Um, so I think we could buy the meatballs and the bread. We, we would, I mean, we usually spend money on two dinners a year. We're not spending any money on hot dogs and hamburgers or rolls. Right. So. Yeah, that sounds good. I, I think purchasing what we need is more respectful because I don't think that we could ask for donations for that. Okay. Yeah. I have, I have contacts. Oops, sorry. I have my contacts, so I'll be able to, I can purchase it at um, probably a, 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 you know, a, a different rate than I would if I had to go to another store. So I can use the same contacts and I'll just buy it as a, as if I'm a commercial business, they'll let me buy the meatballs and the, the salads and the, the bread. And we'll just buy it from those companies anyways, just to, but we'll pay for it instead of donated. That way we're still giving back to that company by purchasing from there. Um, and I think it would be, you know, just instead of always asking for freebies, we just will buy a couple from the same companies that have always given it to us, but we'll purchase it directly from them. We do, we do have a lot of local businesses that have supported us for years. And it would be nice to be able to give back to them because many of them are the types of businesses that would have suffered, you know, during this this time. So I think it's a good, I think it's a good way to give back to. Any ideas or suggestions about that spring dinner or? I have a question for Nancy though about that pepper project. Do you know of any peppers that would be, uh, that would keep the vermin out? Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm gonna, um, uh, hang on. I turned my sound on. Okay, hang on, I'm bringing mine up. So can, can you, can you repeat that? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I was just thinking if everybody grew a certain kind of pepper around their, their garden perimeter and it had the effect of, uh, negative effect on vermin, then we'd uh, really get two things. We'd get peppers grown for this company and we keep the critters out. Well, um, yeah. generally, generally speaking, um, there's not a lot they do. I know that they're usually not eaten, although I have some, I've had some of my hot peppers eaten by um, some of the varmints. Of course, it's usually a one-time deal and they're like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. um, once they get to the seeds, they realize that that was not a smart move. We can try. I can do a little research on that. I've got a, um, I'm, I'm part of a bunch of big forums. So maybe I'll do a little research on it and if I can find okay. that. But, you know, that being said, um, a lot of times peppers are not, you know, bothered like our to me, everything else is. So if we do the, do this pepper project, one, we could, you're right, grow it. Each of us grow some in our own gar beds to donate or to it. But we could also maybe potentially put in a, a temporary bed right out in the back. We probably wouldn't even have to fence it. We could just run um, a pile of compost all the way in the back and right over the lawn, because eventually there'll be another bed back there. That's kind of the future is to add another forest bed back there. But we can temporarily use it as a pepper bed and kind of grow a bunch and really wouldn't have to do too much <coughs> Um, supporting of the uh, uh, for from deer and stuff. So I'll do a little research on that and I'll get back and I'll make sure I can cover it in the next meeting. Yeah, and I thought, I'm sure it's, they're going to get sold, but if the two open beds that don't get sold, we could use those too. Right. Yeah, we could do that. We can also have a little fun because, um, you know, peppers are actually a beautiful plant and we, you know, we always clean out that front bed that has the irises in it and stuff. There's no reason why we can't throw in a bunch of beautiful pepper bit, peppers in there because they're a beautiful plant and you get all those beautiful colored um, fruit popping up in amongst the irises and stuff. That might be a neat place to put a bunch. They'll grow fine. They'll produce a huge amount of crops. So there's a lot of spots that we can yeah. put. We can, we can build gardens and just decorate with peppers and stuff throughout our little area where we mow and stuff. Um, so I'll do some research. I'll find out which ones have the best um, natural deer and groundhog repellent. And um, we'll go from there and we'll talk about it on next meeting. I'll bring all that information. That's a great idea. Do we still have that real heavy color cover on the berm? Partially. Partially. 
Okay. Some of, it's, some of it's been removed, I believe. You know, it's it's not partial. It's all been removed. Oh, it's all been removed now. Okay. Yeah, I knew there's every once in a while I would come across the piece, but I guess most of it's gone. We yeah, can put it in the berm. Yeah. Yeah. We could really we could inundate the entire berm with flowers and um, yep. hot peppers, which would be, I think it would be beautiful. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah we, we could call we, it Penfield Pepper Extravaganza. Yeah, that could be fun. Yeah, maybe we could get some from uh, Jim Gordy. I have a lot of seeds too, so we can always start some, and I know I can pick some up too. Yeah. So yeah, I think between talking to Jim, because he's always been very generous to us um, at Bauman's, he's always been very helpful to us. Um, also, um, I have a bunch of seeds and I can also pick up a bunch um, through the nurseries I deal with as well. So I think we could get a great mix. Yeah. So that's a great idea. I think that's yeah. fantastic. Let me do a little research to find out what things we may have to do to protect them when they're young. But then once they're growing, they're usually not bothered. Once they're up in a decent site, a decent size, they're usually left alone. Yeah, I'll uh, take it upon myself to contact this this company and tell them we're we're interested and see if I can get some of the ideas about what's the logistics, how do they want them, how they. They also them. may they also may have a list of some of the type of peppers they like, which yeah. they also narrow down our search. So yes, if that you could do that, that would be great. Okay. Because they may have a specific type of pepper they want, which would then narrow down which ones we're going to see, which would be safest for being able to be planted without security. Yeah, that pla those plastic quart milk things cut off are really good for little greenhouses for peppers and tomatoes. Right. And we can save those and they can get a good, good start once they're growing. Yeah. By that time, they're kind of left alone. Yep. So that's a great idea. Thank you very much. Awesome. I love it. It's a great, it's a fun thing. That's the neat thing about this garden is it allows us to branch out and experiment. And mm -hmm. a lot of other places have done some stuff that we've never done or things that we've done. And I think this is exactly what the Victory Garden is all about. So yes, I think you, uh, if you can go to, uh, oh, sorry, um, Dave, go on and do your research. I'll go and find out what peppers are and we'll meet up next month and discuss our findings. Okay. Sounds great. Sounds good. Sabrina? So, Dot, 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 are you still using those great big traps for the voles or the little yes, ones? Yes, we are still using the great big traps for the voles, and we have okay. some new one. Gordy, okay. did you have something you were going to say? I did. I just got a note. Uh, Tony's not rerunning for re-election. Yeah, I did see that. Oh. Um, Tony was out. <laughs> yep. All right, um, we're on held items now. And one of the held items, which is moving the shed and the hardscape around the shelter, um, Craig, whose name I spelled wrong on the agenda, I apologize, would like to do the hardscape around the shelter. And he also said that he may possibly be able to move the shed which I thought was interesting because it just came up and I don't know what's going on with um, Department of Works and the shed. And if you have any update on that, Sabrina, or anything. I don't. So I'm going to let Craig explore that. It's not a done deal. Um, obviously, it's just a possibility. So I will keep you updated on that. But he seemed very interested in it. Um, as a part of his Eagle project. And it, if it can all kind of come together with a ramp that would really finish off that shelter area, we'd have to buy the two pieces of fencing for beautification. And then that would bring us down to the other held item, which is I'm skipping to C, which is the ribbon cutting. And I'm hoping that by July, maybe we can plan a ribbon cutting with the Rotary and the town mm -hmm. and the Boy Scouts and whomever else um, we need to get on board, the Mason, whoever else um, helped us out with this shed, not shed, shelter. Um, so obviously that's a, we have no idea whether or not that's gonna be able to happen, but that's kind of timeline wise 
hoping for July. Um, it's, it's not as nice as getting together, but virtual is still a, an option. A virtual ribbon cutting, yeah. That's true. It is not as nice as getting together, but we could do it. I, I like the idea of waiting till after we've got the ramp in. Um, and if he's going to do the hardscape too, I mean, yeah, that would if look we were nice going to do it virtually, at least we could make a little film of it and show some pictures of things as it went along. I could put together a little montage. Um, so, you know, hey, Doc? yeah. What, one of those tables are left up. Do we have still have that metal table that's up on the top there. Yeah. I uh, think we can get a couple of cans of spray paint and spiffy that up a little bit. That looks pretty rotten. Yeah, I think we I think we actually have a can a couple of cans of spray paint for that. Yeah. 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 Um, because of uh, canceled um, work days, that was one of the projects. And I think some of the stuff, you know, we got some of the needed stuff, like the fencing and stuff done. But that is on um, that is a, a work list list, and I believe we have the paint for that. So, mm -hmm. absolutely, okay. I think it's one of these things where, you know, once the weather is nice and it's above fifty or sixty, we can go in, fifty degrees. We can go in, clean it up, and do a quick little uh, sand, which will be nice, and yeah. then spray paint it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think we can get that yeah. done. Um, the other held item, hardware cloth in the shed, the gutters and the rain barrels. Um, and that's something that I know um, is being worked on. So that'll stay on a held item. And I wrote, I think I wrote that twice on the agenda. I did a very, I have to admit, I did a very poor job on this agenda. Um, <laughs> the bat houses and owl nesting box is also... Um, we'll stay in health items for now, unless somebody has anything about that that's changed. Well, on bad houses, we happen to be over to a, uh, I think it's a Mennonite. Mennonite store over there in Marion. What's the name of the store? Dutchland. Dutchland. They have bad houses there for sale. Yeah. You have we, have, we have two bad houses. Okay. Well, what I was going to say is it's, I thought it was just wood and slits, but these bad houses like have uh, a, a wire cloth on the inside. So I guess that's how they climb up. And uh, mm. it sounds like these were, are made be, by somebody who knows what bats want. Yeah, let me, wow. Let me see. That's cool. Um, I had, um, oops, sorry. We have a couple bad houses. It it de it depends on the wood. Um, I have two that were built by the well. I built them, but they're um, an approved model by the state of New Hampshire. I built them up in New Hampshire, um, and it's the key is to have rough wood. So if you're using yeah. a, a finished yeah. wood, then you have to have that metal. But if yeah. the wood is unfinished, which is the two bad the bad houses we have are unfinished um, inside um, and then covered. Um, they they work fine so there's a couple different um reasons for it but i have a lot of the schematics <laughs> and stuff um we actually have the kit i have one that's unmade and one of my thoughts was um and i have the things i would love to actually have a once it's nice get the wood gets get some rough lumber and teach people how to make them it was the coolest project they're beautiful they're they're like two by three feet they're they're large they're good sized houses they're um all over the the National Forest in the state of New Hampshire, which and they're full, so they're really cool. They're it's a proven um, model; it works well. But um, we can check out some stuff. But it's kind of nice to have a few built on ourselves, and it would be nice to put a few more up there. But I know we already have a couple. We already have a couple. Yeah. Mine plus I think that we have another. Wendy has Wendy's, one too. Yeah. So we have a couple different David ones. Does. Oh, Wendy's. Wendy's it's at the garden. Oh, Wendy already. Oh, Wendy's that she donated is already at the garden. So there's a couple already. Um, so we can take a peek and then if not, if we have extra money, we can put a third one up, we can try that one. And that way we can see which one works the best. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, uh, uh my work on having to convert this to, uh, from a house to a home, uh, I could help with the project of building some of those. And maybe that's something you'd like to 
health board tour. Okay, yeah, that'd be it'll be a lot of fun. It's kind of it's easier to do outside. So you know when it gets a little bit warmer. Dave's got a great workshop. Oh you, oh, you do have a good workshop, don't you? Ooh, we could just do it at Dave's house. I can search around because my goal is to get um, um, raw, untreated wood, which I have um, quite a few. I know a lot of the Mennonites have their own mills. So we can get some nice wood that's already prepared, um, some hardwood stuff, which would be nice. So, yeah, let me go and do some research on that, too, and we can chat about it next next time. Yeah, because I know awesome. Gordy's got some equipment that I don't have. Some uh, table. Was he got a chop saw, Gord? A radial iron. Radial iron saw. Yeah. So between the both of us, we probably got enough stuff to, you know, build them. Yeah. You could do it. All right. Um, we're up to new business. No. Excuse me a minute. Did you skip over equipment winterization? Oh my gosh, I did. Okay. I'm just in such bad shape right now. I'm so sorry. Um, equipment winterization. Um, I've not looked in the shed to see if the equipment is still there. Sabrina, do you have any idea if it was moved? I don't know. Okay. I will, first thing tomorrow, I'll send a note to DPW. Okay, and I'll check next time I'm up there too. Obviously, it's just a check-in thing to see if it's, you know, happening. Okay. Yeah. Um, under new business, does anyone have anything else? Because I have something I wanted to bring up. Oh, is, okay. there, any, is there any update on the uh, solar project and the new electric tools? Ah, I'm so sorry. Yes, uh, we have all of those items that were purchased. They are being stored um, by the town. Graciously, Recreation is taking care of that. Thank you, Sabrina. Um, in terms of the timeline for getting that done, we have not gotten a timeline together yet. When it's warm is when we'll get started on that. And I know Larry has a lot of experience with it, and he's definitely as a gardener interested in helping us because he did do our other solar things um, and he's put a few solar projects together. So um, we'll be in contact with him about it. So. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Do you want to say? So Don, did we look into getting any more of those plastic chairs? Thanks. Plastic chairs? Yeah, for the summer. Because a bunch of those got chucked out behind the shed there. They yeah, were, they, or we might try to look for something a little bit more sustainable. Yeah, those were not in good shape. Yeah, well, yeah. most of those were freebies or found on yeah. the side of road bees. So, yeah. okay. But I think we can move towards some more sustainable pieces, um, like the wood pieces we have. Yeah. Or some metal ones also are good. Um. So the new business I wanted to bring up was, this is kind of a crazy idea, um, but I have seen some brick or stone labyrinths that you walk. They're walking labyrinths. I don't know. They're med meditation labyrinths. So it might be a good thing to be in line with like the town wellness um, uh, goals and missions. Um, I, oh, I, 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 um, for some reason that is jogging my memory. Wasn't that going to be part of the fruit forest type of thing, Nancy? Um, well, that was, it is, well, it was more of a, an herb labyrinth. So it's kind of a little walking area. And yes, it was kind of built in. What we ended up doing is um, we set, um, there's a bench and then that bench is surrounded all by herbs and there's gonna be a, um, a sundial. So it, there is a kind of a semi walking area in that. Um, this is a little more advanced and that could be incorporated to be honest with you. Um, it could be the connection between the, the gardens 
um, between. Um, yes, initially we were going to do it, but we, um, by the time we got a lot of the plants in, we, um, it's full. When it, and they're doing well. Dot checked them the other day, and <laughs> everybody's happy, and um, the deer have left them all alone. Of course, we've, we did fence it, um, but it's in good shape. But that was a partial one, was to kind of do a labyrinth of herbs. Um, this one's a little different where it's more of a brick thing. But that is another option is we could build um, a gravel path that is a labyrinth of herbs or flowers. But um, this kind of a neat idea. I thought she showed me some pictures of it. But that could be incorporated in the back. I know there's room for um, at least two more gardens we could um, put one of the gardens further back and in between the two gardens build a labyrinth. So there's, there, it's um, a kind of a neat area. We've got a pretty good piece of property back there. Um, we, we, we may be able to, to utilize it and incorporate it together. So that's kind of where we're at. We ended up, um, it was too thin to have more of a walking area. So we made it a nice sitting. Um, you're literally sitting in an herb garden. It's really kind of cool. I think um, within a year or two when it's kind of full, fully bored, I think it's going to be quite pretty. Sounds great. Yeah. yeah. So the la the labyrinth that I saw that kind of made me think it might be a good fit for the garden was at a church. My husband and I found, just like stumbled upon it. It was in the back area of a church. We were walking and we found it. It didn't take up a lot of room. Um, and then I looked at some online. I been to one or two in my lifetime. Uh, there's one on Long Island nearby my family's house that's made of rock and gravel, and it's a memorial to um, a person. But it's a it's an interesting idea, and it's a, a meditative piece. Um, and I don't know. I've just thrown it out there. So that's my new business idea. To go, really business, to go along with it, not make, and maybe for long range, it sounds like we're trying to do more and more stuff with that back property. Maybe some some of us could get together and do kind of a master plan of what we think it could look like. So if something comes in and, and it looks really good, we say, oh, yeah, we got the space to do that. And right. Like, like when we did at the beginning, when we first started the committee, um, we had that map out and we had that whole master plan that we put together. I remember like specific conversations during that time period when we were looking at just building the garden. Right. And that's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, if, we, if we did something like that, it'd be nice to do that in memory of Terry Rothfuss. Oh yeah. Cause he did so much for us. And when we first started the garden, I think it'd be nice to do something in his memory from the garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have, um, when we, when I was working with the Boy Scouts for, um, for the little food forest garden back there, um, we kind of draw out a semi planned idea so we could bring it together. Um, one of the options that I was thinking is I think we, take a look not only in that back area but all that little forest area that we kind of utilize for our path um, in the past you know we have pretty much um, uh, deciduous trees all through that area box elder mostly. mostly box elder and one, one of my thoughts and um, I've mentioned a couple of Boy Scouts are interested is that we consider planning um, we can just do babies they'll grow um, some evergreens you know maybe a mix of um, a variety of different um, pines and Christmas tree styles, mainly because that would allow them to be year round green and provide more of a natural block for our neighbors. Um, you know, we've made, we've done a lot to kind of make our area very pretty, but I was also thinking that we could kind of thin out some of the junky trees that are there and potentially add um, some beautiful, um, blue spruce and a couple other um, different type of uh, trees that would allow a natural windbreak that we can keep down and let them, you know, let them grow, but also allow for a natural green 
um, brake, which are resilient to or resistant to deer. Uh, deer don't like them. There's a bunch that you can put out that the deer won't bother. So once they get growing, as long as we protect them. And I think that's something, you know, as you were saying, bring up the master plan again, and we all kind of look at, okay, we've kind of really done, I mean, amazing. Our, our The Victory Garden itself is amazing, but we do have that extra two acres of land um, or more that we could, you know, move into. You know, we've kind of done a lot of the projects that we've done on our garden. I think not only should we look at the back, but also how we can kind of utilize, uh, utilize the forest area, maybe beautify it a little bit and make it something where it's, during the winter walking around, you still have a little of that privacy because, you know, obviously the box elders have lost their leaves, everything's died. So it's pretty much just a open area. It'd be kind of nice to drop in some other, you know, as I said, evergreens back there. It gives the neighbors who bought up against us a little more privacy, but also kind of allows us to have a nice walking area during the winter. That's kind of like an escape. So, so I, I, I think, think for the next meeting or maybe in March, we could put on the agenda um, updating our five-year plan. Yeah. And we would – go ahead, Dave. No, I just said I agree that we could do that. It, it's always nice to know what, you, what you're thinking and get ideas and stuff. You don't necessarily have to implement them, but uh, – right. Something. I mean, the shelter was on our five-year plan for 10 years. Right. <laughs> yeah, <it's> true. Okay. <laughs> we finally got it done. I can't tell you how happy I am about it. It's so beautiful. I, yeah. I love it so much. I sat there on Monday. I sat in that shelter and I just stared at the garden. I was like, this is so awesome. <laughs> you know, I just, I don't know. It just makes me so happy that we did that. Um, any other new business? Are we, uh, oh, wait. wait. Gordy? Gordy? Are we still talking about a scout project for opening up a gate on the back side of the locked garden? I, I I couldn't hear what you said, Gordy. I'm sorry, my volume, is my volume there? That's better, go ahead. <laughs> okay, a scout project putting in a gate to the back of the garden uh, to be able to get back there. I, yeah, we, Sorry. About it. Go ahead, put your volume down. Okay. Um, so we have not talked to a scout about that. I should write that down because I know early on when we were first putting up the fence, that was part of our long-term plan. And I appreciate you bringing that back up because I had totally forgotten about that, that we can put in a gate back there so that we can go in through the back and even a gate big enough to open up for larger equipment if needed. Yeah. Yep. I remember us talking about that like nine years ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that's another item to put on the master plan. Yep. All right. We're putting it down. Thank you. Good. You have another thing to say? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, also, I remember we brought up at one of the meetings, we noticed the, um, the little um, kiosk that we have that we all love. Um, it's been there for what, about eight years now? No, it's been, it's been there the whole beginning. Nine years. Nine years. Nine it um, years. I think it needs a little um, love. I think we um, so that I think like to put that in as uh, maybe either um, new roof. An, needs it needs a new roof. roof. I think it needs um, some new pieces and maybe a little shoring up. Um, so that maybe we may want to address that to um, you know it's been there for a long time. It's not really had. You know, it's out there in the elements. So I remember, I, I don't, who's the, the, someone made it. Uh, one of the gardeners made it. No, yeah. no, that was a Boy Scout, Scout project. Oh, there was an Eagle Scout project. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that could use um, a little refresh and it could either be, um, I know a lot of Eagle, the Boy Scouts to have a, a lesser project that they do. Um, and I think the Girl Scouts as well, where, um, you know, painting, cleaning, uh, fixing, 
we can work with someone to help them. And I think that's something we may want to um, shore up because I think if we don't watch it, um, we may find that um, it, you know, it may not be there. So I did notice there's some things that are, it's taken a beating. I think that should be on one of our agendas. Oh, man. It's some, uh, well, some repair. I think I just lost power. Well, you're oh, sideways back. now. Sideways. Sideways. So I think um, that might, that I'd like to have that put put on the list to um, kind of upgrade, clean up, repaint, make it pretty. Well, that goes for the front there too. Right. I think we go. I think we do both and get them all set up. They may need to be restained, repainted. Just you know, we it's been ten years. A lot of these pieces. Um, in order to get another ten or fifteen years out of them, I think we will probably need a little addressing. So that was yeah. one of my, I realized that, I remember we discussed it last year, but we had quite a bit on our plates already. So I just want to put it in the forefront for next, this year. So that's that's kind of reminder in our face. Is Bonnie still taking care of that front bed? Um, I'm, nobody was really taking care of the front bed this past year. Yeah. Um, we did have the, um, we had the sign up online because we couldn't have work days. I can't tell you who did any work on that bed this year, okay. but it, it was not necessarily, none of our areas were necessarily, um, like not taken care of. They were taken care of, but it, there was no real, you know, kind of official, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that kind of thing. So I, I can say no to that because I'm not sure. Um, also, I don't know if you're aware, Bonnie is not going to participate this year with beds. I don't, I'm assuming that means she's not going to participate with the committee as well because she is quite busy with her beds at home. Okay. okay. Great, we'll take her off that list and I have to update the committee list anyway. I do. Um, just one comment on the front beds. Um, I know that Andrea Moore and um, I think Marie Sinti and a bunch of others, and maybe even Chris, I don't know if you worked, a, a number of people on the, um, the first work, not work day work, um, did a lot of work. They work cleaned sign up. Work sign up, they cleaned it, they weeded it, they um mulched it got it all pretty um so it did get um thank you some love I, um, I don't remember that. there was more than those the, the people i mentioned but there's quite a few and it did get all cleaned up and cleaned and so it did not get thin this year yeah, which tells us that next it's year it is the iris right Chris, it did, maybe you and i can check iris in the spring we'll do that it will need thinning this year it did not get thinned it got cleaned and um weeded and everything but it did not get thinned, which means we will have to do a pretty good thin this year um, in order to have room for everybody to grow. Um, but it was taken care of. Those are the three people I, I think I remembered working on it, but I know there was a couple more. And I helped, but I, I pretty much just, um, I raked and I ran the wheelbarrow because <laughs> I, um, I, I was kind of picking up stuff, but other people did all the weeding stuff and it was done over a couple of day period and it was taken care of. So. That's all I can remember who did it. And I apologize for whoever else is watching if you did it, because I know there was more, but you know me with names. So I'm surprised I got three of them. <laughs> um, I'll probably begin by using the sign up process on the computer this year again, if we cannot do the work days. Is there any more new business? No, think we're good? Sounds good. Okay. Motion so, to adjourn. Wait, <laughs> hold on. I just said motion to adjourn. Good question. Uh, this is for Sabrina. Sabrina, if I wanted to do our seed starting, which I've Last year, obviously, we didn't do. Um, if I were, if we use the big class, the 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 big cafeteria the area, community room, uh -huh. yeah, would we be able to even if we just limited it to our committee, you know, and not our committee, but our garden, would we be able to do that if we spread it all out and? Yeah, 
Yeah, we're having classes. A lot of people mentioned it was, they missed it a lot. And a lot of our new gardeners always like to advantage. And we have tons of seeds. So I'll talk with you offline about that and then see about bringing it in early March or late fe late February, early March, and see if we can just spread it out um, and everyone can have a little fun and get some seeds. And um, I think we can, we can find a way to bring it back because we know that we can do this as long as we're really safe and spread out. Okay, I think Dot may be lost because she had no power. Oh, she's back. Nope. Um, My computer just went to low power, so. Okay, she may lose. All right, so I'll talk to you. Um, I'll send you an email and we'll, we'll chat about that. All right, now I'm done. We can adjourn. Okay. So Nancy seconded the motion to adjourn. <laughs> and my computer is on life support right now. So our next meeting is Thursday, February 18th, 2021. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. Bye.